This is Slim Pig's Podcast. Friday night, July the 22nd, live for us on the Slam Pigs Podcast, coming to you a little earlier than usual. Our time, Standard Eastern. Travis here once again. The draft is coming, going, guys. We got a stacked show. Michael's in the house once again. Michael, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, we got a lot to talk about tonight, including the draft, some WWE rumors, some possible returns coming in. We also have our slum, our Summer Slam of the week, our Slumber Party of yeah. the week. <laughs> Maybe a Slumber Party if you're good. But <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. We have one fan question this week. Um, and another response from me to a douchebag. Well, who's our question from this week? And some news regarding that person. Lee, 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 lee. And by the way, show 20. We did it. This is Slam Pigs 20. Slam Pigs 20. 20th anniversary. WrestleMania 20. We always compare it to a WrestleMania. 20 was pretty good. It, it was, was long. Yeah, I mean, there's some bad matches on Goldberg it. and Brock. Ugh. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah. Right? yeah. That'll never be a match of the week. Maybe. No. Who knows? Well, Lee has a question for us this week. And for... Show 25, guess who's coming back, guys? By popular demand from Mary, shout out to Mary Hatcher, Lee is coming back for the 25th episode. Michael, how excited are you for this? Yay. All right, well, tonight, we got a lot to talk about. But first, where can they find us at, Michael? They can find us on Twitter, at Slam Pigs Podcast, or on Facebook, on the Slam Pigs Podcast. Or, as always, you're listening to us now on YouTube, on YouTube. At Hibiki TMD. At Hibiki TMD. So I think the Facebook group got the most action it's got with the draft this week. Yep. There's a been of, a lot of stuff going on on Facebook. Um, thank you, Lee, for all your up-to-the-minute results on the drafts when it happened live. Yeah, he I appreciate our, that. He was evidently our on-the-spot reporter. I guess they get things over there that we don't get. No, he, we're just procrastinators, and he was more He's, on it when yeah. it actually happened. Yeah, well, some of us have lives. It's fun to go back with you, back and forth with you guys on social media. Without further ado, it's time for this week's Raw Review. Well, it was it was the eve of the draft. General managers <clears throat> were unveiled. Yes, and who'd we get, Travis? We got my pick, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan for SmackDown. Maybe a little curveball on Raw, though. We got Mick Foley. Yeah, we did. Where did that come from, do you think? I was kind of surprised with that one. I think his reality show coming out on the network has a little bit to do with that. Yeah. He's going to be around for promotional stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. It's a payday for Mick at the end okay. of the day. I mean, he looked terrible. That, that beard. Be He's lost a lot of weight, but yeah. that beard. It just... Time to shave a little bit. Just trim it up. Christ. Yeah. Even Daniel Bryan yeah. wore a suit. He looked clean and stuff. Yeah. You know, sorry. Yeah, that's a little message. Right. I'm a popular guy. My sources are letting me know the latest news. So, can't Shout help. out to Shrekums. You're on the spot reporter. Shrekums lets me know things. I'm also in with Tuna Meltzer. You know, we're close. Also, Lex Luger. You know, he likes to let me know things. Oh. Huh. So you like ride on his bus? And he will be your hero, yes. You ever ride on the bus? Yes, it is cool. Is it awesome? He has it in his driveway. Does he have Sega Genesis on it? No. Damn it. No. Well, that's no fun. Anyway, Raw this week, the general managers were unveiled. The crowd seemed to be pleased with both. I was pleased with both. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. Like I said, I was a little surprised with the Mick Foley pick, but obviously Mick Foley got totally overshadowed. It could have been John Laurinaitis. <laughs> you were waiting to do that all night, weren't you? You I just had to, wanted to I get had that to build in. my throat up. You just wanted you to get that coming. in. Yeah, it looked you like knew you, something was brewing. Yeah, I knew. It looked like you had to poop or something. Oh, Lord, notice. Yeah. People power. For guys, guys, for you, those of you that cannot see this, he definitely looks like he has to poop every time he does his voice. <laughs> Hear that? Either that or he's going to vomit. But, yeah, th- those are your general managers. Um, WWE title match on Raw. Michael, what, what went down? Well, we had our WWE title match. Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose for the WWE championship. Really good match. Um, not their best match, I think, but <clears throat> I think what they were trying to do is they were doing a lot of safe spots, trying to make sure nobody gets hurt before the pay-per-view. <clears throat> Pretty good pace. There's a little rest time in between here. And, of course, it's on Raw, so there's way too many commercials for my liking. 
But I don't know. Why do they, does it always seem like they wait to save all these commercials for the end of the show? I don't know. I mean, any other match, you have maybe one commercial in the middle of a match. Well, the main event, you get like three commercials. It doesn't show in the ratings, but I think in their eyes, they think that's when the most eyes are on it, and they have a deal with advertisers. To, yeah. Well, then we'll plug our shit in here the most, whether you like it it's or not. It's very frustrating. That's why I prefer yeah. pay-per-views the most. But I prefer um, superstars of wrestling, weird kids. There's like two commercials. And a promotional consideration paid for by the following. Are you doing the Lord Alfred Hayes there? Yes. And you get your little 30-second commercials real fast. Yeah. There's always a Slim Jim commercial in there. Or Domino's Pizza. Or anything, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but there was always a Slim Jim and an Alfred Hayes plug. So. Yeah. Yeah, the match was kind of, eh. I've it seen was, them it was, it wasn't their Yeah, it wasn't their best match. But they did what they, did what they had to do. Um, you kn- it definitely looked like, to me, watching the match... Because I did watch the match live. Did you catch all of Raw? Live? I did. I did watch most of Raw. I didn't I will, watch it all because I was flipping back and forth between that and the Orioles game. I will say what I did like about it was the build-ups during the show where they interviewed each. Yeah, I did like that. You had an empty, you had an empty arena uh, interview with Seth Rollins, which yes. I thought was cool. It was way better than Ambrose's yeah. interview. I thought Ambrose's interview was kind of bad. Yeah, they tried to do the old Shield style interview, but it just came off. He's been a total Bad. bust, this champion. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it live and documented on Slam Pigs Podcast. Ambrose has been a bust. It's been disappointing. And you were but, really excited about it. But at the, at the end of the day, I kind of knew they were going to make it a bust. He's transitional. The epitome of a transitional champion. I told you that I didn't think he was going to last very long. And I'm going on record right now. He's not coming out of battleground with that championship. It's going to be either Rollins or Reigns. Everybody knows they're going one-on-one for the title at SummerSlam. So something's going to happen. Whoever wins that match, hopefully not Reigns, but one of those guys is coming out with the belt. That's going to be your main event of SummerSlam. Whether you like it or not, Reigns is going to be in the main event. Whether it's as champion or as a challenger, he's going to be in that main event. I think this is going to be the time when maybe you see Triple H come back at SummerSlam or at this pay-per-view here to maybe set up the old, yeah. you know, and maybe you'll, it'll set up a feud later on down the road like it was supposed to last year with him and Rollins at WrestleMania. But I don't think the fans want either of those feuds, and I think the common denominator, the fans don't want Roman Reigns in the main event, plain and simple. Especially after they publicized his failed drug test. And he's with the, when he comes back in two days, we're yeah. two days out from Battleground, he's going to get destroyed. How about take a piss test? Yeah. Chance like that. You yeah. know what's going to happen. I just don't understand why. I guess because... And this whole redemption storyline, they want to bring him back with. It's all Vince's baby, apparently, according to Tuna Meltzer. They want to... He's an underdog, and he's going through hell, and they'll love him, and they'll want to see him rise above. And No, they don't. No. They don't want to see a big roided-up guy who got busted for roids that we don't know. We don't know what he got busted for. I'm going to guess. Because he was looking a little de- deflated for a while. Could have been a little HGH. Maybe Vince was in his ear. You gotta take this shit. You gotta be jacked. I'll just You're get, my guy. I'll just give you 30 days, but when you come back, you'll look great. Yeah. So, um, speaking of failed drug tests. Well, that, we'll save that for the news. Okay. Not, not the raw. Okay. Because I don't think he's going to be anywhere in sight of WWE for a while. He'll be at SummerSlam. I don't think he's going to be at SummerSlam. You guys know who we're talking about. we got a lot to talk about Brock later on. Yep. But uh, other than that, on Raw, you had your... General managers announced the title match. Oh, the ending of the match, you had a double pin. Yeah. In which Stephanie McMahon ends up getting in the ring and declaring Rollins as champion, even though the ref had not declared anyone the winner. I hate these finishes. Yeah. it's. I mean, I guess it's supposed to be suspenseful because they ended the show with that. But, why wouldn't uh, they just restart the match? Yeah, I don't understand there. And I don't know why the ref was so groggy after he had the wherewithal to count three. Yeah. All he did was get bumped into. It's not like somebody gave him a power slam or something. Jesus Christ. You think you Earl Hebner that one a little too much? Yeah. At least he didn't take 10 seconds to count to three. That used to get on my nerves with Earl Hebner. Taking 10 seconds to count to three, even when he didn't get hit. Like, he, like in a main event match, every count took 10 fucking seconds. The longer the match went, the slower Earl went. Yes. It, was, it just got annoying after a few years. Take your poisons. Earl's slow count or Nick Patrick's yeah. zigzag his all little, over the place. little wiggle arm. If you guys know what we're talking about, then yeah. you're in the Slam Pegs Nation. But... I hate when they do this finish. It's overplayed. It's been done so many times over the years. You know, uh, it's just such a cheap way out to book it, in my opinion. Well, I mean, I guess I got what I wanted. Remember, a, a few episodes ago, I was bitching a little bit about too many clean finishes on TV yeah. between main event style superstars. Um, I shouldn't say style. Main event level superstars beating each other clean way too much on live television. Even Steven <clears throat> booking. Yeah, I don't like it. So, 
This was still even Steven booking, but there was no decisive winner. So this does set up, I guess, a little bit of suspense. It's supposed to, at least, for the pay-per-view on Sunday, which is WWE Battleground. We will have a post-show this week, guys. Yep. Check out the Battleground post-show. It seems like we're going to have to start doing a SmackDown review each week, so let's get right into it. The more eventful show, obviously. SmackDown Live, Michael. The official name now. I'm not saying it. SmackDown Live. I'm not saying it. Well, I'll say it for us. I know you're not a fan. I'm not a fan of it either. It's stupid. You are wearing the blue tonight for SmackDown. Yeah, so. I got my blue on. I always yeah. got my blue on. Yeah, there you go. I'm always wearing my Orioles hat. That's how I roll. The WWE Draft. It happened. It's come and gone. Got some interesting picks, some unsurprising picks, some picks. So let's run it down. Well, for the most part, let's go ahead and say this was a pretty bad draft show. It wasn't exciting. It was very boring. All the matches pretty much meant nothing. Yeah. Um, Five-minute matches. Yeah, I mean, it was just kind of nothing matches just to pass time until the next draft picks. They meant even less than they usually do on SmackDown, which is saying a lot. Yeah. Well, let's get right into it. The number one raw draft pick. We're not going to go over every draft pick, guys. Number one overall draft pick. Overall. And I believe... It's the same guy that I took, number one. Seth Rollins. Seth fucking Rollins. I'm not saying freaking, because we're not PG. Seth fucking Rollins, the man... Number one overall pick, like he should be. He's the number one guy in the company right now, in my eyes. I think in most fans' eyes, total package-wise, he's the number one guy. Yeah. He's over as a heel. Um, he's uh, at least top three workers in the company. And I just, I, I think on a microphone, he's top three in the company. He's starting more and more to remind me of Punk. You think so? CM Punk. Except I think he's a little bit better in the ring. Yeah. Even though CM Punk was really good in the ring, I think... Rollins is a little more versatile. So number one pick for SmackDown overall, Dean Ambrose. You're number two for Raw in the prediction show. Yeah, um, I was a little surprised with that for SmackDown. I'd, I thought it would be Cena. I thought it would either be him or Reigns or somebody like that. Um, I was surprised that they took Dean Ambrose first. I guess they did that because he has a strap. Yeah, so that's probably why. Do you think he'll really get booked as the champ there? No, I don't. If anything, he'll be booked in championship feuds, but that'll fizzle out over He'll be in their first championship match, most likely. Well, breaking, guys. We're going to patch in right now. Special guest supposed to have him last week. We're just going to do this live on the cusp. Never done this before. Let's go ahead and call Logan on the show, Mike. You ready to do this? Let's get him on. Let's get him on on the Slam Pigs podcast. Give me one second, guys. Getting him on. Giving him a call. <clears throat> Phone, Logan. Should we do this with Lex Luger, too? Logan, thank you so much. Welcome to the Slam Picks Podcast. Finally, supposed to have you last week. Apologies for getting such a late start last week. Where we're getting right to the draft results. We got our whole list of guys that were drafted. We're not going to go down everybody on the list, but we're going to cover the, the majority. The meat and potatoes. We thought the draft was a little uneventful. It did have its moments. You did have the excitement of Balor. Coming up, number three. Um, you did have a few surprises, like Cesaro being drafted so low. And overall, did you enjoy the draft? Do you think they, they dropped the ball? Do you think they nailed it? In your opinion, how would you rate the draft? If I had to rate them from A, B, C, B, or F, I would give them a C. And the only reason I'm giving them a C is because they did – need to have big time players on both shows to make it even and they did a good job with that I'll give them credit on that with John Cena and Orton on Smackdown and I guess you can say Roman Reigns and Lesnar don't on for, Raw don't forget about AJ Styles on Smackdown yeah, AJ Styles you know as the heel All right. and uh, but is there a second Bray Wyatt, maybe? Bray Wyatt. I'm Bray Wyatt. Really Bray Wyatt is on SmackDown. Yep. I was surprised. I was surprised that uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are still on the same show as much as they were, were hyping this as being their last match, possibly, and they were trying to hint that they were going to go on separate shows, but they still ended up on the same show. So I don't know if they're planning to, for this to not be their last match and maybe have a stipulation match at SummerSlam. Or what they're trying to do with this um, that was a kind of a, a surprise for me also some other surprises for me I don't know if it was a surprise for you guys 
Um, there were some factions that were broken up in this draft, including the Wyatt family, who we just talked about, and, as well as the club getting Hold. split from AJ Styles. Hold the mayo. Hold the mayo on that club. So what did you think about the split up of these factions? I was very shocked that the club was gone. I was shocked I was too, actually, shocked. about that. I wasn't shocked. I'm really glad they didn't split up Enzo and Cass. I thought it would have been way too soon to do that, and it would have ruined Big Cass. Also, they didn't split up the New Day either, which I had rumored that they might. I'm glad they didn't split up the New Day yeah. either. I think that'll come down the road, though. My favorite part of the whole draft, more than Finn Balor, would be American Alpha getting that call. You know my love for American Alpha. You are a big American Alpha fan. If you're fan. a listener of the show, I, I, I'd really dig American Alpha. Just give him Kurt Angle as a manager, and then I'm set. It's just hard to see Kurt Angle managing someone for me. Yeah, well, he's no spring chicken. No. So. Can you keep him no, sober? No, but I, I'm, I'm also really happy that American Alpha got uh, drafted. I think uh, they have potential to be tag team champions on the main roster, and I also think, I think they're going to be better. And you're hearing this from me. I think they're going to be the best team in the main roster. Do you think they'll over top the Usos? Do you do you think they're going to come over as the best in-ring tag team like sort of the way the Hart Foundation did back in the day? I think so. I think they're going to be better than the the world's greatest tag team. Okay. And that's being downright honest. Well, that's that's the natural comparison that gets brought up to them just because of their attire. I think and they their have name. 10 times more charisma than world's greatest tag team too, honestly. Yeah, um especially Charlie Haas. Shelton yes. Benjamin was really good. Uh, we'll get into that later. There's some rumors around Shelton, but we'll get into that later. Um, I definitely see them as, as a very great technical team in the ring. I do think they need some work on the microphone, but they're not terrible. Um, I love their in-ring skills. Um, I love what they bring to the table. I'm hoping that they really get a chance to develop themselves on the microphone up there. But I am glad to see these two. It's just the only thing that I'm worried about on the main roster is they don't really have a big guy on the team. You know what I mean? I mean, no, they don't. I, I think that's what's going to hurt them in this day and age with tag teams. It's it's always been that way. The successful tag teams, aside from maybe the Usos. Jason Jordan isn't exactly a cruiserweight. Well, no, he's not a cruiserweight, but, I mean, when you have these teams like the club, you have Luke Gallows, yeah. the big man, Enzo and Cash, you have Cash. Yeah. I mean, how is it going to be believable for them to get over on these guys. I think it's believable in their credentials because Chad Gable's an Olympian. Okay. Jason Jordan's an NCAA athlete. Okay. I think that's all they need, honestly. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I think they're good enough to where that that won't matter. Like the Wyatts. I mean... The Wyatts? Well, I know they were NCAA split. athletes? Well, no, I'm just saying oh. they're huge. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> were they? I think it's... I'm afraid it's going to go over like Apollo Crews with Sheamus. We already talked about that where Apollo Crews just looks small. That's a whole other animal. All Apollo Crews does is flips and smile. Jordan and Gable, they they know how to tell a story. Their matches with the Revival, you saw it live with me. Yeah. Great. Best tag match of the year. One of the best matches of the year. How come that team didn't get brought up, too? I don't know. I don't really know. Um, here's, a, here's a shocker to me. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens on the same roster. We did. I did just talk about that. Um, you were taking a little bathroom break there. But oh, I, I did have to step out for yeah, a second. Yeah, he had to take a little potty break. But, yeah, we did already discuss that a little bit. <laughs> With Zane, I asked yes, Lo- I asked Logan what he thought about that, considering how much they've hyped this being their last match and all. So, yeah. um, it kind of shocked me there. And we also talked about, like, we just went through some of the factions getting split up, like the Wyatts and um, the club. Yeah. I'm so, really shocked about that. Yeah, he was shocked. Which, that- you know, Vince McMahon is still, high, I guess, high on Braun Strowman, but... Yeah, he put him... He put him I'll give him... He put him on Raw, didn't he? Or did he put him on SmackDown? I He's believe. on Raw, He's and on uh, Raw. Eric yeah. Rowan and Bray is on SmackDown. Yeah. Well, we've covered most of the good. Let's get through the bad of the draft, in my opinion. Get to the bad. First of all, Cesaro, way down in the draft picks. Uh-huh. One of my guys. Thought it'd be a lot higher. Before we get there, can we also go over what you had stated before with the club? That Finn Balor oh, yeah, and the sure. club are on the same roster. Finn Balor and the club are are on the same roster. Luke Gallows and Anderson and Finn Balor are on the same show. Do you think that maybe they could bring back the Balor Club? Since there's no... I don't think Japan has a trademark to that. I either. don't... 
it would be interesting. I don't think they want to make Balor a heel. I think they see Jeff Hardy dollar signs in him. Okay. Um, like he has that appeal like a Jeff Hardy as a baby face. I don't I think it's way too soon for that. Do you think that this could set up a feud between the three though? Possibly. Okay. I just wanted to ask that question. What do you think, Logan? <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm going to jump on this because I, I actually started talking about this to my brother. <clears throat> Number one, AJ Styles, is, of course, went to SmackDown and the club and Finn Balor on Raw. <clears throat> what if in the future Finn Balor does bring back the club and him trying to be the leader? That will that will bring tension to the feud of Finn Balor versus AJ Styles in the future, making it must see. I agree. That that sounds good. Yeah. All right. So go but ahead I with your shocked. go ahead with your disappointments, Travis. Well, first of all, Nia Jax. I'm not a big fan of Nia Jax. I don't think she's nearly ready. Black she, birth effect. You said it, not me. Not trying to make it a racial thing. Well, I'm just... I mean, that's not supposed to be racial. It's just that's oh, who yeah. she reminds me of. She does, yes. Black Bertha Faye. Bertha Faye soon. probably was more talent. I don't know. Yeah, she is a little better in the ring than Bertha. But <laughs> that match with... That, <laughs> that match with Bailey. Ugh. Yeah. You could tell that Bailey was trying her best to carry that match. Poor Bailey. Who never got drafted either. Yep. No Bailey in the draft. I know that disappoints you. Sasha Banks has a mystery yeah, partner a Sunday. There's a lot of speculation. It could be Bailey as the mystery partner Sunday with Sasha Banks at Battleground. Well, Logan said it was a good thing that Bailey wasn't drafted. Why do you say that, Logan? I actually because agree too. Do they really have a, you know, the face of the women's division in NXT? That's exactly what I said. Who I, is gonna? That's exactly what I said. Who's gonna take over when Bailey's gone? Yep, I, I said the same thing on a previous show uh, when we were talking about. Uh, Bailey possibly not being brought up soon because of that. There's nobody to really replace her in the women's division. Um, maybe Asuka, <clears throat> but Asuka, I don't know that she's going to get that connection with the fans because she doesn't talk. She won't get that connection with the fans, yeah. strictly because she doesn't talk. And talking, speaking of which, the women's division NXT got milked dry pretty much in this draft. You got you have Alexa Bliss is now gone. Um, Carmella, who I thought was who I thought her whole purpose of staying was to be champion in NXT, but apparently not. And they didn't put her on the same show as her boyfriend, Big Cass, in real life. So we'll see how that works out for them, and, and you know how that. Yeah. Goes. They also did that to Alberto Del Rio and Paige. I see they split them on separate rosters. Hey, business is business. And they wasn't happy. <laughs> um, I don't think Del Rio's ever happy. No. About anything. No. But. No, no matter where he's at. But hey, when they have pay-per-views, they'll see each other. They'll see each other. Sure. Get over it. A lot of the bad on this was, a lot of it was placement. I mean, to draft Nia Jax and Big Show before Cesaro, I know it's all fictional in reality, but I mean, some of this has to be believable to the fans. You know what I mean? And doing just a simple draft move like that tells like younger fans that Cesaro isn't worth it. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I mean, I don't and know. If, I don't know if it necessarily goes over that way. Cesaro. Don't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, just, I'm, I think Cesaro is so underrated in his talent, and they did say he is one of the the, the strongest wrestlers in WWE. But he's Swiss. Right he doesn't connect. He's a millennial. He but, doesn't connect. I mean, Vince said it himself on the Stone Cold yes, podcast that he did, he didn't think that that Cesaro had the it factor, which. I mean, I guess I don't totally disagree with him there, but I don't totally agree with him either. I think his in-ring like talent. I like James Bond gimmick. You do like the James Bond We do, too. We've actually said that, like, I think two weeks ago on the yeah, show. We, we love the we James Bond We do like Bond that games. gimmick. Um, I would like to hear him talk a little more. Because um, like, he can talk. Yeah, what, what, what I would really like to Better see... Better than Roman. I really think they missed... Better the, than Roman, yes. I really think they missed the boat with him with Paul Heyman. I don't think they gave that a chance. Yeah, they cut the um, legs off that really yeah, fast. I, I guess it's because Cesaro got hurt or whatnot. I don't know. No, he didn't. I it don't, just came out of the blue. I don't know why. Probably they, politics. I don't know why they cut that off so quick. I thought that was a perfect fit. Um, I thought I thought Heyman with Cesaro there really could have bumped him up to the next level. But it didn't happen for what reason? We don't know. 
But I mean, Michael and I, we have the whole draft list up. And seriously, once you get down to like ten guys, the rest of the draft is pretty much cannon fodder talent. I hate to say that, but I was surprised that some people got drafted. To be honest, I didn't even know some of these people were still in the company. I think the whole reason, apparently, the rumor Big Show is going to fight Shaq at WrestleMania this year, and Shaq's agreed. Huh. So, I guess that's official for Mania. Is that why you keep Big Show around up so high on the draft? That's my only guess. Well, but how the mighty have fallen? Where was Kalisto three months ago? United States champ. And, and that was a bust. Yep. Rey Mysterio light didn't really pan out, did it? No. And yeah. I didn't think it would. He's and no I, Rey Mysterio. He's going to be in that cruiserweight division. Um, hopefully. Hopefully they don't keep him in the tag team with Sin Cara. I, I think it's just pointless. I don't think anybody cares about that tag team. Um, another rumor involving Sin Cara that we're going to go we'll over go later. to the news. Sin Cara involved a little outside the ring action this week. Yep, with Simon Gotch. But, I mean, that's your draft pretty much, guys. What does it say that Paige has been drafted did you, so low? Did you know that Mark Henry was still wrestling? I thought Mark Henry retired at yeah. WrestleMania, he got, but he, he got was drafted. drafted. So, I mean, uh... Who went undrafted, Michael? One guy. One guy. Keith Slater, Slater yeah. went undrafted. Slater Gator. Is he going down to NXT, or you think he's on his way out? I think he's on his way out. Slater? I don't think so. You don't think he's on his way out? I think they were just doing this just to... Uh, I don't know why, but I think it's just some something... Some comedy angle. A reason. Some comedy angle where he goes on both shows as a free agent and basically jobs out to everybody. Yep. What he I does think best? That's gonna be it. Huh. Well, I mean, cause... I like Keith. I like Keith. I, I don't know why. Because he, cause he's he just makes he why. makes guys look good when he jobs. Because he's a ginger. He seems Especially like when he was facing the legends back a couple years ago. Yeah, that was their go-to guy for the legends. He seems like backstage he's very reliable to Vince and them. Like, yeah, he'll give do. Him, give him Slater. He'll do any. He'll do anything. He's. I mean, the guy came from NXT. I mean the original NXT, the yeah. show, not the, the not, shitty reality yeah, show. The basically the tough enough, and you know he's done everything he could in the company to try and get over. I just don't think the fans want him. He's just comedy relief. He's re, he's reduced to kind of Santino Morello, like Santino was a few years ago. I, I mean it's comedy relief, but it's really not that funny. Yeah, I've never been a big Heath Slater fan. I'm sorry. It's just I I, I know he's trying, but he will never be able to recover from all the jobbing he's done just when you have somebody job over and over again on a show how do you ever change that well drew mcintyre seems to be doing all right in tna i guess yeah but 3mb you know that's tna that's tna but that was that was the draft this week i mean so is the shrek looking guy who's the shrek looking guy funk Funk Master. Oh, Brodus Clay. Yeah, Brodus Clay's the top guy over there. He's not a top guy in TNA. He's like a he's like a bodyguard or something. Uh, he's been in the title picture. That was your draft this your 2016 draft, Michael. In your opinion, overall, thumbs up, thumbs down, in the middle, too soon. Well, Logan gave it Logan gave it a C, which I thought was pretty appropriate. It was kind of in the middle for me. Um, there were a few surprises, hence Finn Balor, um, Nia Jax, Carmella. You know. Some of the women's division, I, I don't know why they brought up all these women. Because there's because two brands Because they are now. low on women, I, both sides of the ball, really, NXT and the main roster. They're really low on talent. And I think we're going to see a lot of women future endeavored. Like, honestly, I know her father's going through court battles, but Tamina, I think we're going to see her go bye-bye soon. Look at Naomi. Look what they've done to Naomi. Couple about a year ago, she was challenging for the title. Well, no. She was injured there for a while. Yeah, she was injured for. I think we see Summer Rae go bye bye eventually too. I think they killed her when they tried to make Naomi heal. Summer Rae's just the the face, not not the face face, but the face. You know, that's all they really like her for and is the, and the her shitty, looks. The shitty part about Summer Rae is she's actually a pretty good worker. That's the yeah. crappy part. She she's she not can. bad. It's I, what they saddled her with. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Nia Jax, so. <laughs> Hopefully she gets better. I am excited about Alexa Bliss. I am a big Alexa Bliss fan. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Big well, time. Alexa really Bliss. underrated. We'll see what they can bring to the main roster, if anything. Um, if I think what they were doing here, they brought up how many women did they bring up? I don't Four? Know. Four, Four than that. Four or five? 
if they can get one or two stars out of it, they'll be happy. Yeah. Um, I definitely see Alexa Bliss maybe being one of them. As far as the others, eh, we'll Carmella maybe? I think Carmella could be a star. Okay. Well, they definitely need more depth in that women's division because it's just the way it was except with younger talent now. You have two or three top top talent, and the rest kind of just yeah. fighting for scraps. So, pretty much. She's earning a payday, basically. Basically, yeah. So, that's your 2016 draft? I'd give it a C. I'd go about C, too. I'm, I think we're all in agreement around the table. C for the draft. Yeah, it wasn't the best draft in the world. And like you guys said, they're so low on talent. Anyway, yeah. it's like they had a, like marquee guys to work with. No. Game changer. Well, I do think that, I've said before that I think the roster now actually has a lot more depth than it has in the past 10 years. You'd like to think that, but yes. at the end of the day, can these guys cut promos? Let's be honest. Can Yes, they were great in Ring of Honor. Fucking Sami Zayn is a great wrestler, but is he a good promo? Yeah, but is that really their fault? All their promos are written for them. They don't get that, to be themselves. No, because it's got to be the hand that feeds you. It's WWE's fault. They, yeah, they don't get a chance. It's not like 15 years ago in the Attitude Era or 20 years ago in the Attitude Era where they gave you a promo slot. Here you go. And, in the attitude era, do something with it. In the attitude era, those guys training I love, centers. I love when Kevin Owens is talking. Honestly, he's your best he's promo on the roster. Do you think he's reading what's written for him, or is he doing his own thing? I think he's one of Triple H's boys, so he gets a pass. I really do. You think so? Yeah. You think? Well, you think all the top guys get that pass? I think without on, to finish up the Kevin Owens thing. I think without Triple H, he wouldn't be in WWE. I don't think Vince is a fan of Kevin Owens at all. Well, of course, he's not a Vince guy. I am. Well, we're all fans of Kevin Owens. That's why they can't get rid of him. <laughs> I mean, the cream rises to the top, and he's rising to the top, and within the next year, he will have a world title on his shoulder. He surprises me that he hasn't been booked shittier to look bad. You know what I mean? But you he's... guys mentioned depth in the, in the draft, right? Mm-hmm. The tag team division has so much depth now. Yeah. But I think there's more teams now than there was back in the Attitude Era. And I, I am shocked to see the Dudley boys not split up. Well, I don't think there's – well, there's more actual teams now. Back in the Attitude Era, they just put two guys together and made them a tag team. Well, you had your teams in the Attitude. You had Edge and Christian. Archers. Yeah. Hardy. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, like, back in the Attitude Era, they just put – Steve Blackman and Al Snow. Yeah. Head cheese. Yeah. It's a great team. They APA inter- was a good team. APA was a good team. Yeah. I'll give it to them on that. I think this is the best the tag team division has looked since – the late 80s, early 90s. There's enough teams. Absolutely. So, I don't know if there's enough. There's enough teams to bring another tag team to SmackDown, like another tag team title. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that the unfortunate part is even though the, the, the tag team division is a lot bigger, I don't know that it's real deep. I think you still have. I think there's a lot of job teams. teams. Yeah, I think, there's, I think there's a lot of mid-card talent. Um, I don't see uh, uh, more than four teams on here that are really going to excite you. I mean, yeah, for every American Alpha, you have the Ascension. Yeah. You know, you have the Vault Villains, which I, I never expected the Vault Villains to be taken seriously. They're a straight-up comedy act, in my opinion. Terrible gimmick. I don't like it. No. Not really. I liked it when it first debuted in NXT because it was yeah. new, but it, it got old. Yeah. I mean, they're very bland. And... The New Day, speaking of tag teams, is about to break London and Kendrick's reign as the all-time longest reigning tag team champions, coming up at Battleground. So, yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy that London and Kendrick have that record. It's well deserved, though, how over they are. Yeah. It's well Uh, deserved. uh, uh, A a part we didn't talk about on on our Raw review was the the little... um, segment that we had with all those teams in the ring. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I did. Which I thought was very... Uh, which probably led the most, to the big tag match. Which I thought was the most entertaining part of the whole show. When you have a 12-man tag team match and that's the most entertaining part of your show. Is that good or bad? It's good for the tag team division, I think, but is it good for the overall show? I think big tags like that are booked to be entertaining. The most entertaining part of the I show. I mean, all, you think about all the tag teams. They can, they can talk on a microphone. Yeah. Why can't the top single stars do that? That's a good question. I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> you have Enzo in there who, who I mean, yes, like, like John Cena said in the ring, he is kind of all over the place, but that's how he is. And it's funny. 
And, you know, he's got so many nicknames for himself. Because Cena, you know, is Lawrence fucking Olivier on yeah. the mic. And yeah, he's, he's, the, he's great. But uh, you also have... Because he's such a great person. Then you, then you have the club come out there. And they can talk on the microphone. They're not the greatest on the microphone, but they can talk. John Cena has been stuck in angry black preacher mode for, like, the last eight years. <laughs> he literally watches, like, these shows on... These religious shows of black preachers and studies it. <laughs> that's all he... That's his promo. I mean, am I wrong? No, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> but then, but then, but then you have the new day come out, and that just adds another dimension. Yeah. The new day comes out, and you're like, oh, cool. You know what? I can't wait to see Enzo and Cass in the new day go out on a microphone. They have a little bit. I just don't think you've seen the full potential. No, we haven't seen the full potential. But we also, before we wrap up the draft, they're bringing the cruiserweights exclusively to Raw. By the that way, that is correct. We did not mention that. Yes. That is huge news. So, in my opinion, are they going to devote an entire hour to the cruiserweights? I, I hope not. You think? To be honest, one I think match. that's too much. One, one match. match. One yeah. match a week. Yeah. And they need to. They need to, to really bring up some people from the cru- cruiserweight classic. I think we, they will to join that. I think we're going to see a Zach lot of those Saber guys. Jr. Yes. Who is my pick to win the whole Cruiserweight Classic, by the way? And, of course, we've heard, I've heard rumors of Tajiri signing with WWE. Tajiri, to again. Be with, uh, to me being the main roster. And actually, if you guys did not hear it uh, earlier today, they announced that there's another person coming from NXT to the main roster, and it's going to be on SmackDown. Rhino is coming back full-time to the main roster. Oh, I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, I know how to feel about that. I know Rhino looks really pudgy anymore. <laughs> like, uh, I, can I just say that I'm? Can I just say that I'm done with Rhino? You're done with Rhino. How many times? Well, when were you ever all in on Rhino? Yeah, I, I, I never really was. But how many times does the guy have to come to a company, leave a company, come back, come leave? Well, he hasn't been back since '05 when he was let go originally. He's been he's been back and forth in this in the company in like the last year at NXT. Yeah, but even before that. How many times was he gone he was in TNA, and back, forever. gone and back? Yeah, it's just. Well, not, there is reasons why he was too. You he know, had he like was a, also doing that, uh, trying ahead. to run for mayor or whatever. Why well, I'd vote for Rhino. Rhino for mayor. I'd take Rhino over the two I, jackasses I really we have. Smart. I heard he's really smart on the, the, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, if that's something he wants to really go for, then why not? Rhino is another one for me that was never really. All that entertaining in the ring, at least my view. Yeah, I never really cared for his in-ring ability. The gore was pretty cool. He he probably has done the spear. best spear I've ever seen. Yeah, honestly, most overrated. maybe Goldberg. No. Goldberg's was stiff. Rhino's was like a work of art. You know, it's, it's yeah, like, like, I'm gonna kill you when I spear you. It's just one of the most overrated moves in wrestling. I hate it. I wish people would quit using it. I always remember Rhino spearing Jericho through the SmackDown. Tron, remember that? Yeah. It just kind of... What what kills me about the spear as a move... It's so overused. It's... And it's... God. It's, it's not really a Like, finisher. they give it to people that they can't think of anything else to give them. Yeah. It's like, oh, let him use a spear. So... That's where we've come full circle with the spear. And we can thank Goldberg for that. Jesus. And it's pretty sad when you have talent like Edge using it. Who's not a big guy at all? Never no. Was. Why would he use a spear? But we have a lot of show to get to. Let's let's save the Edge spear. We we can go a whole segment on. I'm sure your love for Edge. Yeah. You know, that was the draft. Logan, you gonna stick around for more of the show? Yeah, why not? All right. When we come back, we're gonna get into the news and rumors. Every week, we like to do a little promo break here. We like to throw it random top of our head. Do you want to take the first promo break? Any promo past present that pops in your head? We plug it in on the break. That's fine. What do you got for us, Logan? Promo for the break. Now, do you want uh, the best promo? It can be any. The best promo. We we usually do anything that pops in our head. Yeah. We don't rank it. We've had Waylon Mercy promos. We've had Rick Rude. It's been all over the place. Just think of a promo that's memorable to you, and give it to us. I bet you've then heard this one. The Austin three sixteen said, "I just whooped your ass." We have not had that. We've actually show. never had that one. Let's pop the cherry on one of the most legendary promos of all time. Michael takes the break. It's break time here on the Slam Pigs podcast. Here on the break, we're gonna have a little Stone Cold after his win at the King of the Ring. 
telling us just what he thought of Jake the Snake and just what he thought about his reign in WWE. But when we come back, it's going to be news and rumors time, our SummerSlam of the week. More Logan. More Logan. Question. Question. And Hoppin' Bruce Biggs has drawn some battle lines. We're going to get to that. But that's coming to you live from the Slam Pigs podcast. We'll be- the fourth prestigious King of the Ring, Stone Cold Steve Austin, an incredible victory. The first thing I want to be done is to get that piece of crap out of my oh, ring. Come on. Don't just get him out of the ring, get him out of the WWE. Because I've proved, son, without a shadow of a doubt, you ain't got what it takes anymore. You sit there and you thump your Bible and you say your prayers and it didn't get you anywhere. Talk about your Psalms, talk about John 316. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. He is stone cold. Come on, that's not necessary. All he's got to do is go buy him a cheap bottle of Thunderbird and try to dig back some of that courage he had in his prime. As the king of the ring, I'm serving notice to every one of the WWE superstars. I don't give a damn what they are. They're all on the list, and that's Stone Cold's list, and I'm fixing to start running through all of them. All right, Stone Cold Steve Austin. And his remarks? Yes, uh, as far as this championship match is considered, son, I don't give a damn if it's Davey Boy Smith or Shawn Michaels. Steve Austin's time has come. And when I get the shot, you're looking at the next WWE champion. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Obviously, any- And that was Austin 316. What he just whipped? He just whipped somebody's ass. That's right. Ass. He whipped Jake the Snake's ass. Yeah, that's what happened. We are back live on the Slam Pigs podcast, number twenty. With number twenty. With our guest Logan. Logan, thank you again so much for joining us. Let's get right in to the news and rumors this week. Oh, Brock. What a silly boy you've been. Yep. Brock is a silly boy, and he's in trouble. Brock Lesnar was busted for his second failed drug test, taking the day of UFC 200. Yep. It's not been disclosed what the substance was. My question, since this is a wrestling podcast, does this affect his match with Randy Orton at SummerSlam? Do they suspend him? Do they let it go under the rug? If you're WWE, you have to suspend him. What do you think, Logan? Um, obviously from, uh, seeing the, during the draft, how they're still pushing the match, and on Monday Night Raw, they were still pushing the match, I don't see them changing it. I, I really don't see them changing it. At this point, I think it, if they change it, what's going to happen? How are they going to change it? Who's, who's going to replace who, you know, what's going to happen? That, that's the question. I don't think, I don't think they have enough time. Well, I guess they they do have enough time, but I don't think that it's going to affect him in WWE. It, they do have time to replace him with somebody, but I just don't see him doing it. It's just they've they've plugged this so much. I think it's too late. Plus, he hasn't failed any tests in the WWE, so we don't know what he tested positive for. Whatever he tested positive for in uh, UFC might not be illegal in WWE. So much stricter tests. Yeah, much stricter testing in UFC. Um, They use the actual uh, anti-doping agency that does the Olympic testing. So I definitely don't think, as much as Vince McMahon might want to say it is, that the WWE's testing is quite as thorough as that. UFC always seems that their top stars get busted too. They don't play around. Yeah. They don't sweep anything under the rug yep. of the UFC. Logan, do you think if you're WWE you should sweep this under the rug, you suspend Brock? What do you do? Um, I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, really, I mean, I'm going to take it like this. and I'm, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I think they should suspend him. But they should wait for the suspension until after SummerSlam 
and find him. But at the same time, I think the WWE should drug test him now because technically it wasn't their drug test that they gave. I'm sure they already have. If you, uh, I think I think that uh, WWE, if they haven't already tested him, the day that he becomes available to test, he will be tested. Um, I don't know. Like I said, we don't know what the, the WWE tests for. Um, it's not real fighting, for those of you who still might believe that. Um, no one believes that. Uh, well, there's little kids. You know, we don't know if we have any listeners that are younger. Hopefully not, because we're not real PG rated on this show. But um, I, I, I also don't think that they should suspend him after SummerSlam if they're going to suspend him. I think that's kind of like uh, It's either now or nothing. Yeah, you can't set a precedent and, and suspend the guy after a pay-per-view, even though you already knew he tested positive, even though you did that with Roman Reigns. But I don't think they did it quite as far in advance. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't think they knew quite as far in advance that he had failed his test. So with, with Brock, they know he's failed his test. Um, they've already suspended Roman Reigns for failing a drug test. So if he fails the WWE's test, he needs to be suspended immediately. I don't care if it's the day before SummerSlam. It's you can't punish one guy one way and punish another guy another way. Nope. Just not. That's how you get sued. I mean, which we'll get to uh, here in a minute. Yeah, but there's lots of lawsuits going on. I think you have to suspend Brock now. It makes you look like a bunch of pussies. I don't care. Pretty much. That's the bottom line on Brock. We'll see where this goes if the match still goes on as planned. Because you you have Orton on the highlight reel at the pay per view. Yeah. So. If you were going to change the match, you better change it now. Possible rumors Paul Heyman may be leaving WWE. Also another rumor, yep. I did see that. I can see that. Tell us more. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. What was that? Well, you broke up a little bit. I, I said, God, I hope not. <laughs> Me either. I mean, b- besides Kevin Owens, who cuts a better promo than Paul Heyman? Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt, though, I mean, he speaks in riddles, and I know what it's supposed to be, but it seems so long-winded sometimes. Paul Heyman's to the point. He's in your face. He's no holds barred, you know? Yeah. I think Paul Heyman translates better across the board to every demographic than a Bray Wyatt. But that's your opinion, and I love opinions on the Slam Pigs podcast. A little bit of dead air. Michael, did you fall asleep over there? No, I'm not falling asleep. Well, here's something to wake you up a bit before we talk about more lawsuits. Hopping Bruce Beggs, man. I mean, he just had to bring it up, didn't you? Bruce, I'm trying to have a nice, relaxing show, and you got to bring it. You knew we were going to get. You got to bring this shit up. Well, look, Logan. I know we talked a little bit about this on break, but uh, there seems to be a a guy going around on our on our YouTube who likes to post comments. He does like to tell us how great our show is. But he also likes to tell me how much he dislikes me for some reason. Well, you set yourself up. You called yourself, and I quote, I'm too big of a star to be on Twitter. And that didn't sit well. That's what kick-started off this whole war with Bruce. Well, I am too big a star to be on Twitter. I I don't have time for all that. Who has time to go on Twitter, Facebook, I Instagram. have all the time in the world for our listeners. Well, and I, I have three kids. I don't have time for Twitter. I'm sorry. Well, If you want to get a hold of me, I have a Facebook. We have a Facebook. We do. And a Twitter. Shout out real quick to the... Shout out to Twitter. All you people that have time to get on there, kudos to you. Thank I you for don't... all the retweets, the likes on Twitter and Facebook. All you guys in Slam Pigs Nation, we appreciate you so much. So much that we got one of your own right here on the podcast this week. So, <laughs> Bruce Biggs, I have no respect for you. I have no thanks for you. You can tell us great show all you want. But until you come on this show and back up that mouth, I don't want to hear another word from you. Big talk from a guy who doesn't want to come on a show. I think he's afraid he's going to get owned like somebody else we know. I think both of you guys are looking into this way deeper. Well, Travis, besides yourself. Besides myself, what? If somebody wanted to talk crap about me, about my knowledge of wrestling, who do you think is going to win in a debate about knowledge of wrestling and me and any other person? I guess it depends who the person is. We don't know Bruce personally. You know, you know a lot. Just saying. You failed that radio question. That that because you're on the spot and you got nervous, remember? To, Which one was it? When you got tickets to go see that um pay per view and it was a Mick Foley question. 
No, when did he debut the night after WrestleMania 12? That was on the radio. That was on the radio. That's why I said you're under pressure. Yes. But that's a little different. But if he was to come on this show, I have a pretty good idea that, yes, Dallas fan Mike Larkin would take Bruce to school. Bruce, you fired the shots first. I have a little bit of say in it, too, but, you know, I don't want to stir up any waves on my behalf. Anytime you want to come on the show, bud, like I said, on YouTube, come on this show and find out what happens. We'd be more than willing to have you on. So. Oh, please come on. But we will have Lee back. Logan, what, what, what do you think of all this? Think all this. Well, uh, now, you got nervous on a question, correct? This was back, like, ten years ago. This wasn't on the podcast. This was an actual, like, in my car, they were giving away tickets to a pay-per-view. I thought you were at work on your break or something. Something like that. It was when we both worked at the same place. I'm not oh. going to mention it. But, um... We both, I was on my, that was the day that Mick Foley was signing his book. That's where I was going that day, to, to his book signing. At the Walmart, at the Walmart shopping at, center. Yeah. And, um, anyway, on the radio, on my way back from that, there happened to be uh, a question on the radio for tickets for a pay-per-view, um, and you had to be the 10th caller. I never thought I was going to get through to begin with, but when I did, and they said, hey, you're the 10th caller, they asked me the question. And I knew the answer to it, but I just got nervous for some reason and said the wrong thing. Yeah. I said the wrong year. I had the I had the correct You're like a lo- year off. I had the correct location and all that, which I knew the year. I just got nervous and said a number and I got the question wrong, so I didn't but, get the tickets. But anyway, the point is Bruce Biggs, come on the show. We'd love to have you on. I know Mike would love Travis to have you on. Travis gives me shit about that to this day. That was like ten years ago. We could have gone to that pay per view. And I knew that question as soon as you mentioned what yeah, the question was. Well, I was like 90, or I was like WrestleMania 12 or something. Yeah, 96. 96. I said 97 by yeah. accident. See? I had the right, I had the right show. Well, Christ. No one's perfect, except Kurt Henning. You only had 10 seconds to answer it. <laughs> Which, it's a lot easier to answer when I ask it to you than when, oh, there's tickets on the line. True that, but. So. You guys get Michael riled up, and I try to warn you guys every week, don't do it, and you see what the results. I don't like it. But let's I, move on. I don't care for it. Bruce Biggs, I'm not going to get angry. I know you want him to hop. I'm, I, I just want him to go away. Rusev? Rusev. Inside joke for you, Bruce Biggs. You'll never know what that means, but that's because you're a douche. Well. <laughs> well, there you have it. 50 wrestlers, guys. Logan, have you heard this in the news? The big lawsuit this week, the conglomerate of former quote-unquote talent that wrestled in WWE is suing the WWE for not informing them the long-term effects of wrestling, post-concussion syndrome, all that stuff. A ridiculous lawsuit, a cash grab spearheaded by Road Warrior Animal. Of all people, Hall of Famer. I thought he was in good terms with WWE, but he would be a little bit better, I guess. Since his brother, John Laurinaitis was so high and up and he never really seems to get the call to be an agent or anything yeah so a lot of names that really stuck out to me were guys that never worked in wwe rip oliver you remember when rip oliver was on monday night raw and do you remember that no tearing it up me either because he only wrestled in portland oh he is a territorial wrestler from the late 70s rip oliver was is on this list suing how is how is he eligible to sue if he was never in the company that's a good question. That's what does, I'm saying. Does it go back to when, I guess, Vince's dad was running things? I guess that maybe he worked for him when they came through the territory. What's really disappointing about some of the names on the list, you know who's on the list? Which pretty much takes out them going in the Hall of Fame, guys. Demolition. And that breaks my heart. I really want Demolition. Did you really think they were ever going to go in there, though? Yes, I thought they'd go in eventually. I didn't think they were in bad standings with WWE. Bruce, were you a, a Demolition fan? That's That's Logan. I'm sorry, Logan. See, you got Bruce on my mind. Apologies, Logan. Hopping Bruce Biggs is making me stumble all over the place. He oh, can hop. got you fired up, too? I'm a little... That's the first guest to ever get me a little Ricky Morton fire. Yeah. I gotta admit. He insulted you because I learned a lot of wrestling from you. So when he says that he's going to school me in wrestling, that's like a jab to you. Even if he does to you, he has to get through this, too. So. Uh, good luck, Bruce. Logan, were you a big Demolition fan growing up as a kid? I like Demolition. Yeah, I think they're definitely worthy to go in the Hall of Fame. But yeah, I mean, 
it's just surprising some people have the nerve that didn't even wrestle there. And that's going to make the lawsuit look like a joke. The judge is going to see that and be like, well, he never wrestled there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the same thing that people were doing with the NFL. This happens so. all the time. This is just a bigger group of wrestlers, but a bunch this was of, on TMZ. This trended on Twitter. Really think about high. it. Like, a lot of these wrestlers probably don't have any money left. That's so. pretty much what it comes down to. So. I bet if we pulled up the list, we every name on that list we go down would be broken down, bitter, fucking Paul Romas, your, you know. Yeah. I know Paul Orndorff's on that list. He, is he? Yeah. Wow, he just... He was on he TV. He looks terrible these he days. He looks, well, cancer. Yeah. Plus, that's why. Sorry, but he looks terrible. But yeah, the big lawsuit guy. Michael, do you think this is a joke? you think it's going to be a bust? I don't think it's going to be a bust. I... Does it I, make you sad about demolition? I see, I see... I see this just... I see Vince just settling on this. I don't see this actually going to trial or anything like that I think Vince will just hand him some money and be done with it because he doesn't want the publicity yeah what do you think Logan what do you think I think it was stupid when I heard Sabu was on that list yeah you know every single one of them people every single one of them wrestlers managers whatever that is on that list knew what they were signing up for. They knew what the contracts that they were signing up for. They knew the consequences in pro wrestling. Everyone knows that. You know, I don't know if you guys heard what Michael Cole, uh, not Michael Cole, but uh, the coach said about it. And he, he said, uh, you know, he's probably had 10 to 20 headshots to the head that gave him concussions in a, a small period of time, you know, it's it's sad that b- 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 the way that you guys brought it up, you know, a lot of them are probably broke. A lot of them probably need that money, and that's probably why they joined. Oh, definitely. That list. Definitely. It, 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 it's sad. It's a class action lawsuit, basically. I got one of these when I was working for a company after I had already left that company. Um, and it was a big class action lawsuit kind of like this against the company for, I'm not going to say the company's name, I don't want sued, uh, for the company not giving proper breaks. Lando Lakes Butter. <laughs> no, it wasn't Lando Lakes Butter. But um, I got a notice that uh, a bunch of former employees or current employees were suing them for that um, for a uh, a lot of money, but there were so many people in the lawsuit, I think I would have got like $3 out of it. <laughs> like something that little. I think that's kind of what this is, but I I do see Vince settling here. I don't think he wants it to go to trial because the more, the longer it goes, the more it gets covered by the media. Yeah. So if he can make it go away now, I think he will. True. But yeah, I mean, that it is really sad. Like you said, Logan, I, a lot of these guys I was a fan of. Yeah, you know? but when you have your Rip Oliver tearing it up in Portland, who never even <laughs> graced New York till he's probably retired. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous. At the end of the day, I don't think they're going to win at all. Class election, class action lawsuits are usually not very substantial in the long run. What's next? The backstage brawl. Yeah, I'm ready to have a backstage brawl Would with, you with Bruce serious? Briggs. We've moved on. I got my first gorilla moment in just now. The will you be serious? I've gone this far in the show this week without having to pull a gorilla. Uh, uh, making me sick right now. Well, this will make you even more sick. Yeah. Backstage brawl. Sin Cara, Simon Gotch. Michael, what the hell happened? Well, first of all, Simon Gotch is half of the bald villains. For those of you who may not know that, um, <laughs> it takes a, a minute to think of his name when you, when I think about it. That's the sad part. Simon Cross. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, the surprising part to me in this is who actually won this fight. Sin Cara, apparently, it wasn't much of a fight. Apparently, the word on the streets is that he didn't shake Sin Cara's hand or something. After Logan, match. have you heard a lot about this news story going on? And, you know, I, I want to I comment on it. Um, you know, Sin Simon Gotch got, him, got himself in a, a pretty bad situation because especially with the... The rumor that happened a couple months ago when Sheamus almost got his ass kicked by Sin Cara, by 
you know, who plays Sinclair, who to go. Yeah. So I, I find it funny that anybody would want to step up to him since Seamus is not a small guy and Sinclair is not a big guy. So it's pretty funny that, you know, Seamus would have almost lost. Yeah, he's not a good guy. He's not a bad guy. He's Sinclair. <laughs> yeah, but he's... Yeah. Hunico, Hunico yeah. is basically from the streets. So, you know. Uh, from the I don't like streets. the whole situation at all. It's never good to hear that there's fights backstage because, you know, but but a lot of, like, uh, a lot of people say you need to have those veterans like Big Show, Mark Henry, and all them to help the backstage and make it more you know positive and not so negative and in that effect that brings that always brings to mind for me like tough guys in wrestling like out of the ring real life tough guys the and barbarian this, immediately comes to mind no the barbarian he didn't come to mind for me I've heard stories of him taking on like 10 guys in bars but, but guys like Harley Race well, yeah. Not a big Definitely man. A Harley Not a big Ray. man, though, no. in stature. Um, guys like Haku, who was a little bit bigger than Harley Race. Pretty much Not the a whole, whole Samoan bloodline. Not a whole lot bigger than Harley Race, but he was said to be maybe the toughest guy in wrestling. Yeah. Like, you could put him in a room with as many guys as you want, and he's going to find a way to beat them all. So, But in the wrestling world, he was not booked like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, it just brings me to that point. I, you don't have to be big to be bad. No, you don't. But, I mean, it, it's never good to hear of a backstage fight, like you said. I think it's a shame when guys can't get along, but there's always been egos in wrestling. Um, it's it's always it's usually surprising. I mean, when Batista got in a backstage fight with Booker T, it came out Booker T kicked Batista's ass. Do you remember that, Logan? I remember a little bit of it, uh, but you know, it's it's never good to hear anything like that because you know. It, you got to be more professional backstage, especially you got to get along with everyone because you don't want another Matt Hardy and Edge personal fight, you know, like the that happened with Lita and all that. And, you know, you just don't, you don't want it. But, but also, you don't want another Vader and Paul Orndorff in the shower where he beat Vader with the shower shoes. But, but, but we all know how Vince McMahon is. He loves... When things get personal, and that's why Edge and Matt Hardy had that big feud over Lita, because you know the personal issues that they had outside the ring. You know he loves that kind of stuff, so it wouldn't surprise me if we see a Sinclair versus. Uh, no, hang on. Did the uh, Von Villas got drafted to SmackDown? Correct. Yes. Now, well, we won't have to deal with that anymore, will we? <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. Thank goodness. But that's pretty much your news and rumors this week, guys. Uh, Come to that part of the show. Who's going promo break this time? You or me? You want it? Age before beauty. Come on. Will you be serious? Well, you're older. Speaking of beauty, I'm going... Beautiful Bobby Eaton. Be the Mid-America Champion. If they want to get rid of Dylan, baby, I'll get in the ring with him myself because I know I could kill that old man. He's all gone. Oh, come on, shut your mouth. He's got very close veins. The whole thing, it's the only thing holding him up. Right, beautiful? Now, the Mid-America Champion, you interview him or I'll do it myself. Never mind. I'll handle it. First of all, Lance, not tell your friend how to do the last week that I was going to be the People's Champion. I did not tell you that, Dave, last week I was going to be the People's Champion. I was going to defend this Mid-America belt against anybody and anyone that's included this little chump in the ring right now, Bill Dundee. And I told you that last week I was going to go in the ring with Steve Kern and defend this belt, and that's why I've done it. I like to beat that boy's head completely off his shoulders. And now, everybody's talking about they want to shout this Middle America belt. Well, you're not giving me enough time out here to represent this Middle America belt. You're giving all the time to J.J. Dillon and all the time to Kamala. Well, if they're so much the big champions, won't they sign a contract or get in touch with Jimmy Hart? And I'll put this Middle America belt up against Kamala, J.J. Dillon, um, Steve Kern, Jerry Lawler, anybody wants a shot. Bill Dundee, all you got to do is get in touch with my manager, Jimmy Hart. And this right here, this Middle America belt, the thing that I own, in which I'm going to be the people's champion, and get in here and defend it against look, the little midget. It's this going to be a handicap match. Greatest, and I'm going to get in the ring with Bill Dundee, and I am going to defend <laughs> this Middle America heavyweight champion.
and we are back. And that was the beautiful one, Bobby Eaton, in a rare singles promo from him. Michael, did you like the Midnight Express with Cornette, Stan Lane, and in, in the Prime? Hell yeah. I love the Midnight Express. Hell yeah. How do I, you not like them? They will never be in the Hall of Fame due to the affiliation with Jim Cornette. Yeah. And his hatred for the whole world, apparently. <laughs> Hey, I'm I'm a Jim Cornette guy. I, I love Jim Cornette, in yeah. my opinion. But I, I think he's a little hateful. It's time to my favorite part of the show, Michael. Listener questions. And we have one of them on this week. Logan, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Your question this week on the Slam Picks Podcast. Shoot from the hip. What's you got for us? I'm going to shoot what, shoot from the hip, definitely. We guys, guys, did, do you know? Did you guys hear about the commentary changes that happened for Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown Live? Yes, and thank you for bringing that up because we totally forgot to talk about the commentating teams yeah. earlier on the draft. Yep, we did forget that. Um, Travis, have you heard about this, and what do you think? I like it. I mean, it, it doesn't thrill me that Corey Graves and Mauro Ronaldo, I think, would have been the best match together. Yeah. But, Logan, what's your question for us, man? That was just... My question is, is what did, do you, do, would you, how would your commentary ta- teams be, and do you think WWE made a decision? What's your opinions on... I think your flagship quote-unquote show, Raw should have had a, a giant change. I think Michael Cole needs to be, start being phased out and put on SmackDown as lead, like the old days with Michael Cole on SmackDown. I would have put Mauro Ronaldo and Corey Graves two-man booth, because I can't stand three-man booths. I'd get JBL the hell out of there. <laughs> I'd let JBL go. Alright. Michael, well, what do you got? Uh, mine, I do like Mauro Ronaldo. I think he should be the voice of Raw. I don't know if that conflicts with his contract because he still does announcing for other organizations. Boxing, yeah. 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 Um, he still has a contract with Showtime, I believe. But um, I would definitely have him as my lead commentary on Raw. I think it just adds that Jim Ross kind of voice. You know what I mean? He When he talks, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, that's wrestling. Yeah. He's got that Gordon Soley voice. Yeah. And, I mean, he knows all the moves because he has announced before in Japan. Um he announced New Japan's television deal on the Fight Network. Yeah. With, um, what's his name? Uh, Bass Rutten? No. That no. was Pride. That, he was announcer for Pride. Josh, Josh, uh... Oh, Matthews. Josh Barnett. Yes. Josh Barnett and Mauro Ronaldo called New Japan. But yeah, that... Uh, Mauro Ronaldo, it doesn't get any better currently. He's could be, if done right, this air is Jim Ross, without yep. a doubt. Yep. I would put him... And the first Mauro Ronaldo. I would put him, I, I don't know if I'd put him with Corey Graves. I, Corey Graves has become great on NXT. As he's much, funny because he's heel. Yeah. He's playing a heel commentator. And that's what's lacking too today in wrestling, heels. Well, Lawler went back to that. Lawler's out, guys. Yeah. No more Lawler. That's the end of an era. I, as much as you hate JBL, I would put I would put Ronaldo with JBL. Um, just, well, be, just because okay. I think JBL they have. and Ronaldo, you know, have a good chemistry there. Um, with the heel face thing, um, it's still a three man booth on Raw. It's yeah, Byron Saxton, yeah. Carlton Banks, and oh, sorry, I mean <laughs> Byron Saxton, Michael Cole, and your favorite. But um, on SmackDown, I would have Corey Graves, and I would give him Michael Cole. I think Corey Graves could be a good heel for Michael Cole. Um, even though Michael Cole was best served as a heel, I think. When he was a heel announcer, that was the most entertaining he ever was. He did. He was a little bit he, he didn't he, have to have a match, for God's sake, no, at WrestleMania. But, but I mean, he was, the and most, win. he was the most candid when he was a heel. He I was. mean, I think he just comes over as... He's natural. Ugh, yes. Like when he tries to be the good guy. Pukey. Yeah. When he tries to be the good guy announcer, it just gets on your nerves. When he was a heel announcer, he shot it from the hip. Yeah. I liked it. But that's that would have been my announced team. What do you think, Logan? What would have been your announced team? <laughs> I'm I'm it's <clears throat> I think Michael Cole should stick to Monday Night Raw. And uh here's the reason why. You know, Michael Cole's been in WWE for oh my goodness, what, twenty five years now? 
something like that. He was backstage before, you know, He's... 1990. No. He doesn't go back that far. I think no, he was he, hired he on was in like... 95, 96. 96-ish? Yeah. Late 96? Yeah, he was a backstage guy. He was a war correspondent during the Gulf War. Yeah. But, yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of uh, Jerry Lawler or something like that. You were probably thinking but, of, you know, of like Todd Grisham or somebody. <laughs> Todd Grisham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ESPN? <laughs> Is he still on ESPN? Yeah, him and Coach. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, and they cover wrestling now. How do, weird is it to see do, wrestling do, on ESPN? Do they now? get Do they get ESPN in England? I'm sure they do. Yeah, I don't know. Or Sky, it's Sky Sports. Yeah, or something like that. So I was wondering because ESPN's mostly like American sports. But Logan, you got Michael Cole as your head anchor on the flagship show. Quote unquote. Uh-huh. Who else you got? JBL. I actually really am glad that they did. Um, I, I'm glad that they did that, and I would have, I would have put Jerry Lawler back on Raw, and I think the only reason I would is because Jerry Lawler has actually been doing really well being a heel lately as a commentator. Um, him, Jerry Lawler, and I would definitely put, uh, I would put David Otunga. On Raw with them, or keep. By, I don't. I'm not a Byron Saxon fan. I'll be honest with you. I would have took him off a long time ago. That's who we forgot. David Otunga is your new, one of the new announcers on SmackDown too, I believe, with JBL yeah. and Marinola. Yeah. Crazy. Where the hell's he been hiding to have a contract? He's been doing a lot of things with like the kids groups and stuff that they work with. Um, he's kind of like, you know, Mark Henry. And those guys that have yeah, but he's gone like dormant, shows. like completely for years. When was David Otunga on television last? You know what I mean? Like yeah, 2013, 12, something like that. Yeah. Don't forget the pre-shows. Oh. He was doing pre-shows with Booker T and Corey Graves. Yeah. Oh, I don't watch those. So that's why. You know. <laughs> There's enough wrestling on each week that I don't have that's to watch. That's the other one that got removed, by the way, Booker T. Booker T is also removed. Yeah. Correct. I guess he's going to be strictly pre-show, maybe move down to NXT. Maybe. Did they yeah, announce Booker who? T is going to be uh, pre-shows for pay-per-views on Monday Night Raw with Jerry Lawler. Since Corey Graves is gone, I think Jerry Lawler's taking his spot. Well, King's winding down his career. I mean, why, why, he's already why, had a why, heart attack on why Air Why is Corey soon. Graves gone? Who, gone from the pre-show oh, up to okay. Raw is what he meant. Yeah, and so I think they're adding uh, somebody to the pre-show panel. Um, I love the pre-show panel. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I love the fact that they bring brought that just to the seems, network and all that. It just seems too easy. But yet. I would have Morrow, JBL, and Corey on SmackDown. I think if you have Morrow and Corey, Raw would not have the best commentary team but at could, all. Could you have two heel commentators at once, though? You with, could, I with, mean... With him and JBL? They did with um, Michael Cole. Well, no, they didn't. Because all there was a uh, baby face. Yeah, yeah I don't... JBL could be a face. He could be... JBL could play face and heel. Like, he can agree to disagree and agree on things and still be a heel and a face at the same time. JBL... Which we've seen JBL do that a lot. I can't see JBL being a face. When you think JBL, you don't think of a face. You think of a heel. Michael. I yeah. just can't stand Byron Saxton and even put him in JBL seat. Yeah. I don't I just I don't I don't like it. I don't like I think he's boring. I just I think he's repetitive with his words and stuff like that. He's um, so smiley. Like I think and I, I, I'll, I'll throw myself out there. I think I would do a hell of a be- better job than freaking oh. Byron Saxton. I think any one of us would. Yeah, I would do I would do a great job. Oh, but, my God. But I also kind of sympathize with Byron a little bit here because he's kind of put into that third wheel mode when they make it a three-man announce team. You know what I mean? I don't feel sympathy for Byron. Sachs I don't like three-man announce teams in general. I think it should be two-man announce teams, one face, one heel. That's what makes for entertaining announcing and wrestling. Look back in the past. 
Jesse the Body and Gorilla. That one-on-one dynamic. Yeah, Jesse the Body and Vince McMahon. I mean, you looked at it. You had your heel announcers and your face announcers. Even Vince McMahon and Lawler became pretty good yeah. over time. Heenan and yeah, Gorilla. Heenan and Gorilla is the all-time greatest. Other, other than Lawler and Ross. I mean, Lawler They're and Ross. They're better is, than Lawler and Ross. they got to be put up there, though. Lawler and Ross. Think Call about all the memorable. action, but the memorable moments with Bobby and Grill are just oh my well, god, comedy moments. But um, well, I got serious sometimes when yeah. Flair won the '92 Rumble. Yes, yes, yeah. Bobby just all over the place. Yeah, but think about and Jerry, Flair think about, did it. Think about think about Lawler and Ross with with Lawler's ah, you know, and yeah. ah, and uh, you know, and Ross. My God, he's broken yeah, in half. Lawler's <laughs> and Ross's everything was entertaining. So those have to be your top two. Yeah. I, however but order you want to put them. We just answered what could have been another possible question. Yeah. We did it to ourselves. We shot ourselves in the foot. The best problem. announced team ever. Best well, announced team we ever. We just gave you that answer if anybody wanted to ask that. But I'm going Bob and Gorilla. You're going Lawler Ross. I like Lawler and Ross. As yeah. much as I love Bob as and Gorilla. As much as you love. Hey, Bruce, wake up. Yeah. But um, Lawler and Ross is just, I, I just can't see anybody beating them. Well, Logan, thank you so much, man, for your question. And also, thank you so much for finally getting you on here on the Slam Picks. But number 20, you were on our 20th episode, man. Is there anything you want to promote? I know you do a lot of indie wrestling stuff on the show. Feel free. Let everyone know where to reach you guys at. What's going on, man? Well, I do interviews for pro wrestling. Hit me up if you want to do an interview on mine. Um, heck, if you want me on your podcast, I'll join. I'll do some. I'll uh, throw some Paul Heyman mind tips in there and uh heck hit me up on facebook i'm going to be making a page here soon and uh hopefully in the next year or two i'm hopefully 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 i'm, I'm hoping to have run my own wrestling show here in the next year or two well, so don't well, worry well logan why weren't we invited to do an interview with you huh? what was that why weren't me we, why weren't we invited to do an interview with you you said you do interviews for pro wrestling um, I think we are pro wrestling. Anytime. Will you be serious? We are not pro wrestling. We've never trained. We've never been in the business at all. We're just running our show, our awesome show, but we're not wrestling. You say what you want. And when you say we are something, you're acting like we are the be all end all of that. We are the pro wrestling reporters. No, we we are reporters, but we're not wrestling. You know what I mean? Like, when you think about the Slam Picks never podcast... Paid, we've never paid a due. When you think about the Slam Picks podcast, what do you think about? Wrestling. I know what you mean. We are wrestling. I know what you mean. That's why I'm asking. He said any time. So we'll have to set that up. Can you be serious for a I'm second being before serious. I security? I'm being serious. But he has to let me know up front because I have a busy schedule. Well, Logan, go ahead and wrap up where we can find you at on... Um, you have like social media besides Facebook or websites or anything for you guys? Um, you can just hit me up on my Facebook. Just look me up, Logan Myers. Logan Myers. The first person on there. Well, Logan, thank you so much, man. Have a great night. Hopefully, someday we have you back on maybe number 30 for you on the Slam Pigs podcast. Have a great night. You too, guys. Have a good one. Bye bye. Later, man. We'll see you, bud. Later, man. We'll see you, bud. Thank you. Hey, and Logan was a pretty good guest, Michael. Yeah, I liked him. Very informative. He's number two on my list. And now we have another segue into getting our name out there with his interviews and stuff. So things worked out. Yeah. Didn't even know that about him. Yeah. So awesome. I, mean, I knew he worked in the business. Yeah. We didn't even mention that on the show. Which probably should be mentioned. We, we did at the end. For the NWL. Yes. The National Wrestling Alliance. I'm sorry, not League. the National Wrestling Alliance. It's getting a little late in the show. <laughs> League. Shout out to John Rambo, who runs it, has for forever. Was well, This is the Mid-Atlantic area, guys, on the east coast of the United States. It's a territory around here called the NWL. So, uh, Logan is a big-time player there. Are we more northeastern than Mid-Atlantic? We're, we're not Mid-Atlantic, Mid yeah. That's the Pennsylvania, Maryland, okay. New Jersey. All so we're stuff. like border. Like Think of Little League World Series, the Mid-Atlantic region. Gotcha. Think okay. of all the states in it. My turn. It's your turn for promo break time. We got some more show left. We got push or de-push. Are we doing push it? Push or de-push. With this new draft, we got new people coming up. This is the perfect time to do a push or de-push. I think we should do one each tonight with all, all right. these new people. Sounds good. What do you do with these people coming up? Okay. But it is my promo break. And you know it's going to be a good one. For Hop and Bruce Biggs, you're going to do Jumpin' Jim Brunzo. Oh, 
Jump for Jim Brunzel. Did he ever speak on a microphone? Yeah, he did. But we're not going to have that promo on here because I think that would almost be worse than if I ever heard Hoppin Bruce Biggs talk. But I'm well, I set I set the bar really high with the Bobby Eaton promo. So <laughs> jump. <laughs> I'm going to do a classic promo from one of the best factions to never get talked about seriously. I think they get brought up as kind of like a secondhand faction because they were never in WWE, but they were one of the wrestling business's greatest talkers. Not the Four Horsemen. I'm not talking Four Horsemen. Who am I talking about? I have no clue. So you have tell no us. idea who I'm talking no, I'm, about. I'm stumped. The fabulous Freebirds. The Freebirds. They were in the WWF for a cup of coffee in 84. Yes. In the garden. But, but. but they were never really in the company. They were never, never never known for that, even though they are in the Hall of Fame now. Now. They never get their due, though. Do you want your free... <clears throat> do you, they don't get their... They are in the Hall of Fame now, yeah. but they haven't for years. Even though Michael Hayes has been an agent for a decade. Yeah. Do you want your Freebirds with Jimmy Jam Garvin? you want originals with Gordy? What kind of Freebirds? <sighs> it's tough, because both are great. I gotta go. I love Jimmy Garvin. But I gotta go with originals with Gordy. I love Gordy. I gotta have my Gordy. Stupid! <laughs> Man, are you stupid! You are gullible! You're just plain ignorant. Ain't that the way you put it? Ignorant! To fall for such a well planned plot from a bunch of old country bumpkins, huh? We told you! We warned you! Yet you didn't listen, did you? Well, that's what you get for messing with us. You understand, boys? That's what you get for playing with fire. You get burnt. That's what you get for trying to steal a dog's bone out of his own backyard. And that's what you get for ripping us off of our world six-man title. You understand what I'm talking about, man? I think you do, because I think everybody in the world has just been introduced to the hottest thing. The boys are back in town with a new thing, baby. Papa got a brand new bag, and it's called a Bam Bam Slam. <laughs> That's what you just felt. That's what that piece of film just showed. And you know what the end result was? You didn't get up. <laughs> you didn't get up. You didn't go nowhere, because the Bam Bam Slam put you down, didn't it? That's right. You know, we tell them boys not to come messing with us. You know, messing with us in our own backyard. And they come messing with us. And look what happens. Yeah. Come on and mess with us again if you want to. Come on back to our backyard again. We're here for one thing and one thing only, and we'll go through you or anybody else to get it. And you know what? Funners, you've been number one since we left, so you might as well get used to being number two because the birds are back. And that was the fabulous Freebirds. That's how I like my Freebirds. Fabulous. That's what they were on the microphone, I can tell you that. No more. Not that fabulous. Uh-uh. Not. Yeah, the really? Rougeos. Yeah, they're fab. Yeah, I know. I love the Rougeos. That's why. I'm not a big fan, but... It's that point in the show. This week's... Push. Wait, 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 wait. We forgot our other question. From Lee. Michael. Lee the Lee. How silly of us. Uh, do we have to? Yes, we do. Lee's coming back. All right, Lee. Sorry about that, Lee. His question this week Guess was... it's round two. What is the most underrated, overlooked match that doesn't get enough praise of all time from any era or any promotion? Oof. That's most, tough. That's tough. Most overlooked match. I think I've said it before. I think it was one of my match of the weeks, my pick. Uh, I think I've said it before in my opinion. Bret Hart versus Owen Hart at WrestleMania 10. I don't think that's overlooked at all. I, <laughs> I think, do. I don't. I don't think it was ever recognized for how good of a match it was. I think it was just recognized because Owen Hart won. I don't think it was recognized for all the great stuff that was in that match. There was I don't remember seeing one botch in that match. But if if you don't like that one, I can come up with another one too. No, I'm I mean, go ahead. I can go with the, I can go with the first time Steve Austin and Bret Hart got in there at the Survivor Series. Yeah, that was a good. That's one. another overlooked match. I think it was kind of just thought of as oh, that was the first match of their rivalry. They had worked each other in house shows, and remember that Kuwait tour they did? Yeah, remember I, I had the VHS of that. Everybody was saying, everybody always says about the submission match, 
at, at WrestleMania 13. I thought but their they, Survivor Series match was yeah, the best match. I thought the Survivor Series match was better than the match at WrestleMania, but it never gets talked about because of the match at WrestleMania and yeah. the, the stage that it was on. Um, but yeah, that would probably, that and like I said, with the Bret Hart, Owen Hart, those would be my two that come to mind. Yeah. You, Travis. Like I said, I think it was a match of the week. I'm sure it was. I know it was, actually. Great tag match, Michael. I love this match. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> God. The Heavenly Bodies and the Steiner Brothers at SummerSlam 93. I love that match. You're the it's... only person that ever mentions that match. Well, there you go. There's <laughs> my point exactly. Yeah. Hopefully think... the Slam Pigs Nation has looked up the match and didn't that didn't know about it since the match of the week. That's going on Twitter. But our lovely fans seem Slam very Pigs knowledgeable. Slam Pigs Nation is trending right now. Is it? Yeah. Huh. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's what I got for that. So I go all over the place. That's just. Well, I picked two. Do you have another one on top of your head? Top of my head. No. It's not Hercules and Ricky Steamboat at WrestleMania two. Ugh. God, I hope that wasn't one of them. No. Okay. You know, it was a really good match. You, kind of a squash match. The blue, I'm dead serious, so don't laugh. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, I'm already laughing. The blue blazer versus Mr. Perfect at WrestleMania 5. That was actually a good little match. <laughs> it was. Owen Hart and Mr. Kurt Henning going at it. Fine, I'll get another one in since you don't. I was serious, and Michael's over here crying out laughing. I'm sorry. That's a good match. Hey, guys, look that match up. Michael, you're going to watch it. Okay. We're done, maybe I'll look it up. You're going to watch it. I have watched it. It's good. Okay. What do you don't think it's good? Well, I just didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's another match that nobody else has ever mentioned on any wrestling show. Can I go totally out of the spectrum, make it like a multiple man tag match? If you like. Talked about a lot. The very first match, the very first Survivor Series, was really good. It might not be technically a masterpiece, but the storytelling with Honky's team and Macho Man's team. Okay. Where it was down to three on one versus Honky. Um, I mean, I'll go WCW on it too, Matt. No, if you want. we're good. And all I feel these like off we, the we only stuck to the, the WWE. All right. these off the wall matches. Jesus <laughs> Christ, that's enough. You know they're good, though. Holy shit. See, that's shit. the thing. God. It's brain overload right now. Do you want me to get you a glass of water? No. Oh. I want you to stop bringing up matches that why? nobody else has ever thought that's of. That's why we do life. this show. <laughs> that's why the question was asked because Lee goes to the source of untapped wrestling. Okay. Well, that's us. I'm glad we could be that for fuckface. I'm Would sorry. You be I mean, serious? I mean, I meant Lee. I'm sorry. It just came out as fuckface. Lee's face. coming back, man. I mean, I, I meant to say Lee. I apologize. Which well, time for this week's push or D push? All right, guys. This week's push or D push. I'm going to go first. All right. I feel like with the draft and all the NXT talent that's been brought up, I feel like we have to at least have one NXT talent on this. Um, I'm going to go with Carmella as my push or de-push, Travis. All right. For me? For you. Push her. You have nothing to lose. What do you like about Carmella? I'm sure they're not bringing her up to squash her. Well. Well, she's very attractive. She's okay in the ring. She's not amazing. I think she has some charisma. Being teamed up with Enzo and Cass will rub off on you eventually. Okay. You I think mean, you think that's where they're going to put her? No, she's on SmackDown. They're on Raw, yeah. for one. No. Um, I think she's going to be maybe a Kelly Kelly type. Maybe not that bad. Maybe a little bit better than Kelly Kelly, but she's not going to set the world on fire, but you have to push her take a chance. Michael. I disagree. You deep push. You bring her up to squash her like a bug. I think she's mid-card talent. So you, you push her initially? I wouldn't get... If I'm going to push her, it's going to be a very small one. She's putting people over pretty much for it, any year. She's, she's going to be in the hunt, but I don't think she ever wins a title. She's going to have a lot of buzz around She might She might have a title match or two, but I don't ever see her winning the belt. See, I see her kind of like a Naomi. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, if you want to think about it, uh, <laughs> Natalia. Um, I mean, I even though Natalia is great in the ring... It's just that Natalia is always that one that's in the hunt, but never wins. You know I'm, what I mean? I'm going to say I'm so attracted to Natalia. So, oh, she's, about ve Natalia. she's a very beautiful woman. Yeah. But as far as how she's going to ever be booked, you know she's never going to win the belt again. 
I mean, it's just the way she's it is. She's being phased out. She's she's part she's of what late thirties and diva age in WWE's eyes. That's like yeah. you're in your sixties. She's there to help train people, basically. Yeah. She's basically the measuring stick in the That's ring. That's why she's working with Lynch yeah. right now. I Thank mean, Lynch. she's the measuring stick in the ring. We got good for the butterfly belt. She loves that butterfly belt. Sorry. But I would de-push Carmella. Wow. Shocking. Talk about shocking. I thought you were... I know. Usually when we bring up people to push or de-push, we want to push them. I threw a curveball there. See, That's why I, I did it. If I say Alexa Bliss, I'm going to push Alexa Bliss a lot more than Carmella. Well, I'm just saying, like, that was the first time I think that one of us has brought up somebody that we didn't want to push. Like, you may not have wanted to push her, but everybody was thinking I was going to push her. My push or de-push this week, Michael. Neville. When he comes back, what do you do with Neville? Can I can I answer both sides? Sure. Can I say push and de-push? How does that make sense? Well, uh, I want you to push him as a Cruiserweight champion. Oh, but not as a main guy. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Is that considered push or deep push that is for him? A, that, well, he's not jobbing. He's not losing. Yeah, but, so. he, but he wasn't winning all the time either. So I guess it's keep him where he is. You know, except as, you know, big time cruiserweight talent. Yeah. Um, That would be my answer there. I know it's kind of different, but I'm kind of different. Well, you're right about that. I'm awesome. I'd push him also the same way. Hmm. Cruiserweight. So... But never let him up there more than maybe an Intercontinental title shot. Maybe give him the belt once. Unless something drastic happens. Unless he has an Austin 316 promo on his that's agenda. What, that's which, what I think of when I think of Neville. I think he's going to have that Austin 316 moment. Will you be serious? <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried. <laughs> yeah, that's, can't say that with a straight face. But yeah, that's push or deep push this week, guys. On the road to SummerSlam, we're well on our way. We've covered a couple. Last week... It was Brood and Warrior, SummerSlam 89. Went over very well with our listeners on Twitter. They liked it. So, this week's SummerSlam match of the week. SummerSlam 92. Shawn Michaels. Sorry I got in your face there. I got pumped thinking about this. Shawn Michaels versus The Model. Man can't hit the other man in the other face. I said this last week when we had the Sherry question. I wanted to make that happen as a, sh- as a match of the week. Here it is. Do you ever have a lot of memories of this match, Michael? Heel versus heel in 92 was very rare. I do remember this match. Very rare. I do remember this match. Um, I remember that this rule got broken about halfway through it, and nothing happened about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought if this was a stipulation, um, the match would end. Like somebody Well, they would didn't get hit each other on. in the face of the very end when Sherry fainted. That was the finish. Yeah, but they still hit each other in the face in front of the referee. I don't, I don't think they did. I yeah. hope they did a good job of not doing that. They did it right in front of the referee, and nobody got disqualified oh. for it, even though that was a stipulation. I have to go back and check that out. Yeah, that's what I didn't like about this match. So why would you, why would you make that a stipulation, and it's happened anyway, and nothing happened? Yeah. So, but it was a good little match. You know, a lot of a lot of good spots. I liked it. Sherry's butt cheeks were everywhere. That's why you like this match. Well, it has nothing to do with the match. Come on. Let's let's speak some truth here. You made me one dimensional. You hurt my feelings. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I was looking for it. It was a good competitive match with some ass cheeks. Just throw it in there. The thing you think about in this match is ass cheeks. I said competitive match before that. So that's that's what. And this is your match of the week. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. This is a good match. It was sexist of you. I was about to say I was very sexy of me. No. Very perverted. Not very perverted. You cannot miss Sherry's behind. And Bobby's commentary was golden in this match. If you remember, I think some moons over Miami or something along the lines that Bob said. I don't know. It's it's just a, a match I don't think anyone's ever really going to talk about on any other podcast. On this show, we give everything a chance. So that's my match. SummerSlam 92 made it. It did. Not in probably the way you would have thought. No. But, but I think we've already done that match, that other one. I think we have. Yeah. So. All right. That was our match of the week, guys. Show 20's in the books, Michael. We did it. Number 20. Sorry, guys, it wasn't a bigger hoopla. But, but uh, we had Logan on. We had we, a guest. We did. But, you know, we're saving it for 25. That's, that's, the, that's the the rematch. <laughs> round two, baby. The war to settle the score. <laughs> round two. I and mean, I won, a, I won round one. I think it was a 10-8 round, if you ask me. I nobody's really close. scoring. We're actually joking when we say the war. I am. Lee, can't wait to have you back. Logan, thank you again By so much. By the way. 
Mary Hatcher, thank you for answering my oh, question yeah, last she week. Did. And whose draft picks did she like better? Mary liked my draft picks. That's all good. We're all winners. No, we weren't. Mary said she liked mine. No, I'm saying we're all winners because we're all the Slam Pigs Nation. Slam Pigs Podcast. Don't try and spin it like you're still a winner somehow. You lost. Will you be sitting? Nobody won anything. You lost. I won. I'm the Does star. Does it mean that much to you? Then you can have I'm it. I'm the star. You win, Mike. Yes. Over I the know I won. WWE draft. You don't have to keep telling me I won. I know I won. I Hop had to convince Bruce, you that I won. Hop and Bruce Biggs. We'll try to get him on. I know you really want me to get on that. I don't know how to contact him other than YouTube. So You don't have the balls. If you make some information more open, we can get a hold of you balls. to set you up. He probably, he probably had both of them removed for no reason. Phelps. Yeah. Phelps. About, Michael, Michael Phelps. What about it? He has balls removed. Oh, he did. No, that was Lance Armstrong. That was Aaron Lance. Okay. He had one removed. I mixed those guys up. And he didn't have both. Swimming and biking. Hoppin' Bruce had both removed because they didn't believe he was a man. We'll see where this goes. I'm interested to see, Bruce, if you can make it on the show. We know it's not going to happen. Show 20, thank you guys so much. Never thought we'd have 20 shows, but thanks to you guys for all the feedback. And on a serious note, not to kill the show at the end, but while well, the tragedy is going on in the world, our thoughts and condolences to everyone involved. The world sucks right now. I know there's been shootings in France, um, other Germany countries. Germany today. Germany today. Yeah. Um, and also, what's going on here in the United States of America right now with with the police officers getting shot just randomly. Um, I know there's a lot of hate in this country that goes back a long way, but I really don't see why innocent lives have to go. I'm not on anybody's side. I just want to give my condolences to all the victims' families out there, and we hope that you get through this time good. <laughs> I don't know what better way to put Bottom it. Bottom line is you can't judge all the cops based on a few bad. And it's just going to, it's senseless I mean, killing. Not just that, but all the terroristic things going on right now. Yep. Um, in other countries, Germany, France, um, we definitely send our best wishes out to, to the victims' families. And can't we just have peace on earth? I peace, know we like to Just have, peace and wrestling. We like to have fun on this show, but I don't like to see this. I don't like to see anybody dying. Yeah. It just, everybody should die from natural causes as far as I'm concerned. Um, Unless they're rapists or murderers and they should be tortured to death. Well, or that. Or that. Um, but B. that's my thoughts on that. I know I like to have fun on this <clears throat> show. Uh, I like to tell it like it is, so that's how I'm telling it. Shooting. Shooting from the hip, baby. Well, Michael, thank you for making 20 shows possible with Always. me. Always. Milestone for the show. You Mile- can't have a show without me. Well. Even we, though you did one time. We had a side story. It was terrible. With, I thought you liked the, the show with Frost. I, I, it, I'm sorry, but it didn't have me on it. It's not uh, the same. Bruce, he's giving you so much ammunition. Good. So hope he uses it. Probably, for myself. Probably won't. Michael, thank you for joining me. We'll see you here Sunday for the Battleground Post Show. And we'll see you guys here too on the Slam Pigs Podcast. We'll see you at Battleground. Have a good weekend. See you in a couple days. Oink oink. Motherfucker. You be serious. Oh, you want to send what? it off on a motherfucker? Absolutely. See you guys. Have a great yeah. two days. Shut up. This is Slam Pigs Podcast. Hey guys, Mike here from the Slam Pigs Podcast, reminding you, as always, check us out on Twitter, at Slam Pigs Podcast. Check us out on Facebook, the Slam Pigs Podcast. Or, as always, check us out on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. The Bicky TMD is where it's at. Until we meet again, oink oink. Hey, 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 what is going on?